So uh, this is uh, the Trader Investor. It's been a while since we did any kind of uh, video. I've been on uh, vacation and doing some other stuff. So hopefully uh, we're back uh, in full swing now. The market is doing some crazy, crazy things. Uh, but crazy things sometimes are uh, opportunities uh, to take advantage of if we know what to look for, if we position ourselves in the right way. So uh, today we'll uh, look at what happened since uh, we last had uh, uh, our session, since we did a video. That I think that was uh, around June 6th time frame. What happened since then? What is the market telling us? Again, when I say what is it telling us is just the charts, right? Not uh, fundamental, not macroeconomics, just the charts. What are the charts telling us? We'll look at that. And then, uh, man, if you have some uh, trades, uh, we will uh, definitely go over those trades. Uh, I would love to hear that you did take some trades uh, during this uh, period because there were a lot of uh, opportunities there, which I will point out now before uh, we dive into your uh, trades. So that's the plan for today. Uh, so let's look at the uh, broader market. As you all know, I like to start, you know, with a very long term outlook, like my monthly chart. And the monthly is very, very intact. And I started with the Qs because as we've talked many times, the Qs tested the 61.8 retracement multiple multiple weeks even multiple months if you're looking at the monthly multiple times and now once the last test they're just like moving hyperbolically it's it almost looks like uh, this uh, I like to go back to COVID if you look at this COVID time where price drops very fast and then parabolic move up we're almost starting to see something similar right it's it took longer this time to drop it took a, a significantly longer period of time because this was driven more by general market conditions not a pandemic so that's why this pandemic uh, move down is a panic move panic selling everybody just wanted uh, to sell and everybody wanted to manipulate the market and wanted to drive price down to bring it back up so this time the broader market condition the economic condition uh loom of recession uh, inverted yield curves uh tech uh, starting to lay off uh, finance being hit all of that combined uh it drove the market down for a few uh months now since the beginning of uh 2022 we were going down ironically since the beginning of 2023 we're going up if, uh, i always say uh to people who uh, i talk to regarding stock market cycles when we have a, a bear market i like to look at it as about a year a year and a half before it gets out of that uh, bear market again we take the covid exception out of it so a year and then we're right back out of it are we completely out yet to be seen but you like my fibonacci retracement we've captured the 78.6 uh, uh you won't see it here but we'll uh look at this downtrend and then i'll uh, put uh, uh some uh, uh fibonacci retracement there that we'll see that we've captured that 78.6 which means we're back up on the other side of the trade right so we're done with the uh, bear market and additionally with the basic 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 higher high higher low higher high higher low right there it's we have very good right here this whole area here we once we made a low we tested it a few times but every time we tested it, it's higher and then we keep making higher high higher low and boom she's out of there right so here even if you forget fib if you go back to basics when you're making lower highs is when you're concerned when you stop making lower highs here you stop making them at this level then you it's time to think about the reverse 
and since we love Fibonacci retracement, green to green zone is a zone we say it terminates, right? It first terminated here. They're all very clear, green to green. Here's one, it terminated there. Here's the second one, it terminated there, it's still within the green to green. This one was very short lived. So you can combine it with this, these two together. And that's how I will look at them. And then the third time was this zone. And this zone held extremely strong, right? The first time that we did the 38.2, we bounced from there, but the next time we didn't bounce. We kept, we sliced through. We bounced from 50 and then next time we came, we sliced through. We bounced from 61.8 once, twice, three times. It, it never sliced through. This was very, very strong. I, I want to do this recap because we haven't talked in a while. Right, it's really important when we're looking at our green to green. First time what happens? I take this trade. I'm cautious because it could go more to the downside. Next time it comes, it, yes, it did go to the downside. I take this trade. Cautious, it could go to the downside. I take this trade cautious, it never came to the downside. Right? And if I want to add to my position when I get a higher, low, higher high, this is where, when I break this high, <clears throat> this is where I feel like I can add because higher, low, higher, high. And even if I wait for this next one to break, for this to be a cleaner, higher, low, I take this from 311 to 385, that's still a very uh, nice move, right? Even the basics will tell us that things are looking good. So when we come down to the, to the daily, right? We see those uh, movements more magnified, more granular movements. Uh, and this is where we start to look at what happened at various supply zones? Uh, what happens at various demand zones? And so we're leaving a lot of demand zones and we keep these because these are future uh, actions, right? That we're going to take a look at. Since we leave this on our charts, we'll see what happens. And then the supply zones, we hit the supply zone, we bounce from it, but very weak, right? Very shallow pullback in this area. We hit the next supply zone, we don't even pull back. We just keep going to the full end of that supply zone. We pull back again, shallow pull back. And so we keep moving our uh, retracement back up. And then now we're heading to the next level. We, I, we've kept talking about these supply zones and during our gap away we keep hitting supply zones and we see actions taken so from here what what i want to take a look at is uh, again as a refresher this last move down this is what i mean by the 78.6 captured right this last move down the 78.6 is captured so we know we're done with this move because once we captured it Right? So if we zoom, we struggle, 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 break a little bit, struggle, struggle. Once we break through, we're done, right? We're not coming back. And so that's why it's important to keep this in mind to know when our direction has changed. We've broken through that 78.6, direction has changed, and now we're drawing this to the upside. And if you look at the spies, it's a similar story. This last move to the downside. Struggle, 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 struggle. And finally, when we break above for a few days, we kind of test it, even though we broke down a little bit, that's okay. We kind of test it and then it just keeps going to the upside. So same sorry for both sides and now we're just waiting to see what kind of pullback do we have green to green you see as you can see we test and gone 
right green to green that those are always always important to uh keep in mind always uh let's remove some of these old drawings which don't mean much to us now and so overall the market is very strong very strong heading to the next supply zone this is where we have that 100 percent capture uh but keep in mind this uh, moves to the upside are driven by very few companies yes uh financials are also somehow participating not all but if you look at chase chase has been doing really well right chase is uh again participating in that move to the upside uh my favorite small bank and you know fintech this is where i'm in in this area i'm looking to capture this uh 24 areas i know i deviated slightly now from the market analysis but this this entry is not based on uh charts because this has not lived long enough right it's still a new fairly new company uh only three years old uh, just about three years old in terms of um uh publicly traded right it's, it's lived longer but publicly traded about three years so this play is hey the mar the markets were beaten right we take the spies we're above 50 percent. we take the cues we're above 61.8 therefore when we are having entries for long term we can say okay the market is done going down at least for now i can take a chance and, and enter right if it wants to go down great because we add to those positions right this is how even for my long term i'm looking at spice cues iwm i look at these three and i make a decision for my long term ah okay market is in a bear market okay time to uh, put cash together so that i can have a good entry or market is done going down time to uh you know do some uh, entries right based on the cash that i have put together or do additional analysis and say hey i want to add more or i want to remove some right if you enter at the low do you remove some again some decisions to be made but overall the market right now is very very happy it's extremely happy market so any questions about what i just said no we're good um but i really appreciate the analysis i think uh sentiment is the same i feel the market is just uh ripping so it's interesting to see what's going to happen as we head to um all-time highs on uh, SPY and QQQ. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Interesting to see. So let's take some time then and go over some of your trades. So uh, switch back to hourly view and uh, give me a ticker and then we'll go over those tickers. Yeah, I've been really actually um, trading SPY. Um, so that's been kind of um, where I've been spending my time primarily because I was starting to feel like tech is getting overstressed as we got closer and closer to all time highs. So I kind of just switched my focus a little bit because I thought maybe potentially, you know, as we get to all time highs, we might see some uh, some weakness in, in SPY or in uh, Qs. But obviously I was wrong in that assessment. And uh, <laughs> so far it just keeps... Uh, keeps going up um so um uh, but I, I did spend some time on the spies uh primarily yeah you know you you can never go wrong with spies and cues mm. they they make enough movements that you can make the amount of money you want to make in the market without having to worry about tesla without mm. having to worry about nvidia yes those are sexier but these are more predictable. 
and a lot easier to make more money on these than it is on those uh, sexy tickers. Uh, but uh, I brought up uh, the queues and uh, spiders as a comparison, and I wanted to show you something. The tech led the way down, like for, for um, in terms of percentage loss, they led the way down, and they're also leading the way up. Mm-hmm. And this is where uh, the queues gave a much significant return uh, for those who entered near the lows, right? Near the lows for the queues versus the lows of the spice, percentage-wise, right? 42% from the lows, mm. where are 34% in the spice. And uh, I like to also add in this type of analysis, I like to add IWM. The IWM, it's uh, sometimes it gets tricky. Like uh, after COVID, after COVID, they seem to be weak, right? In terms of uh, return. And that weakness continued. It didn't really uh, materialize. There was a brief moment where they did better than the spies, but not better than tech. So it's it's good to have this perspective, uh, especially if, uh, like, it's, you see here, there are moments where IWM does better. In a down market, if you want to play uh, shorts or uh, buy puts, IWM is a better uh, play in my opinion because they go down the fastest mm-hmm. they don't always recover the fastest but at least they go down the fastest and by fastest I don't mean speed I mean distance <laughs> right so yeah. totally. you get a significant uh, earning potential in IWM when you have a weak market mm-hmm. so yeah no, this is a really good point. That, yeah, just look that as uh, something to look at. So, let's see what what day was your first trade? Yeah, my first trade was on. Um, it's right here on. Uh, what day is this? It's on. The 27th of June. Okay. This is this is an yeah. interesting setup. Okay. For some reason your chart looks a little different than mine. We're both looking Are you at looking spy. at the spies, right? Yeah. Spy the, hourly. The hour? Yes. Mm-hmm. Regular trading hour, or are you looking at extended? No, this is regular. So I was just looking at um, Tuesday, um, the June twenty seventh, yeah, uh, at nine thirty. Yep. So there's that consolidation zone. So we saw that pullback, um, and it consolidated first around that twenty three point uh, six area, and then I was actually waiting for it to break one of the high of the consolidation to enter. Uh, and it never actually broke it. So it kept going down, down, down until it got to that 38.2. And then at that 38.2 kind of based a little bit. And then it broke my um, consolidation zone that I had at that 435, uh, which is what I used um, as my consolidation zone. Okay. Yeah. Um, so right there at four. 34, 435, 434.92, um, I entered to the upside. And okay. then I had my stop at, um, um, it was at that point, I think my, uh, um, right below that demand zone. Um, but it was, I think, my uh, my 50% um, retracement. 
So somewhere here. Let me, yeah, somewhere yeah. right there, right at 429 point, uh, for, right, rough, right by 429 is where I had put my, uh, my stop loss. I, I want to say, say something. I, I want to tell you how excited I am about what you just said. Because <laughs> when you enter up here, you usually tell me your stop is here, 432. You enter 434 and you stop 432. So I always tell you that's crazy. Right, because you need to give it wiggle room. This one I really like because you gave it a lot of wiggle room. And that's, just, I just love it. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty proud of myself too. So <laughs> yeah. I was pretty happy about that trade. Um, and then I kind of let it sit. It started consolidating. It moved up right away. And then it kind of started doing a little bit of side moves movement. So I, I decided to just move my, um, my stop loss up actually. Um, and so I moved it right below that demand zone, which is at that point, it was the demand zone that it created. Um, so I moved my stop loss up and then I said, okay, let so me let's, uh, let's pause. I, let me draw this. I took out the supply zone because we took care of it. So you're saying this yeah. demand zone got created. And so yeah. you moved your stop. Uh, let's not, let's use this. So you yeah, enter here. Now. Your initial stop was here, and then now you said, I'm going to move it up a little bit, which yeah, is okay, which, which, which I like, actually. I, I like that, uh, that thinking because you said, okay, sideways movement, I, I don't want to uh, risk a lot, so I'm just going to keep. But again, I'm proud that you didn't make it so tight to where you say, oh, I want to come up here, right? It's, that's not, that's like yeah. almost a guarantee to not make money. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah so there's I a lot that. of manipulation. Too. I saw the daily chart, the bar charts. You know, there's anywhere between one to three dollars of movement every day. So, I said, you know what? Let me just give you some um, some breathing room. Yeah. Um, so I moved my stop up right below that demand zone, and then, uh, of course, on Friday morning, I had that huge gap up. Yeah. Um, and then had that gap up and. After that, I had like a couple of days of side days movement. So I actually decided I was like, I was going to, um, I was going to say, I'm going to take profits here. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. It might be going back down to close this gap. So I said, I'm going to take profit and then watch what happens. Um, and then I think a few days later, um, you saw that gap down. Um, and, and then I was, I was tempted to take an entry, but you know, I said, let me wait <laughs> and see what happens. Uh, it looked like the gap had closed, so it could go both directions. It could go back down and maybe retest that uh, demand zone that we created um, or um, keep going back up. So I said, you know what, let me just wait. Um, and then it actually ended up going back up, retesting the supply zone now that was created by that gap up. Um, and then it went back down and then for a day started consolidating um, and then at the end of the day uh, or sorry at the end of the day you see right there it kind of got back up to the high of day um, and so i said i'm gonna take a chance here um, and then i entered that trade and i put my um, um on the monday july 10th um, i entered that trade um and i put my stop right below um the demand zone that i had um created on um when i first okay. entered the first trade okay yeah so here's your demand uh, zone. This no demand not zone. that one uh i actually said that you see that that sideways consolidation yeah here um uh, a little bit before the first gap before yeah. that, yeah, right there you see that, yeah, but the a couple of days before, just right there, I said, um, on, yeah, that right there was my demand zone because you see move up, consolidate, yeah, okay. I said that was another demand zone, um, okay. so I used that as my, um, as my stop. Okay. And then. Uh, the next day, <laughs> uh, it went a little bit higher, 
kept watching it, watching it, and then boom, um, that Wednesday gap up again. And yeah. I actually ended up exiting the trade again <laughs> right there, even though it's not my 2x. I said too many gaps all over the place. It's making me a little nervous. I'm going to take my profits and see what happens. Um, and then we had a couple of like that day, just consolidation, next morning gap up. And then I was just waiting for the gaps to close, but then it just kept going higher and higher. So uh, I didn't take any more trades after that, but those were the, the main two trades on SPY. Okay, so overall, right, overall, I really like what you've done. I like how you've analyzed it. I like how you used an area of value for your um, stop. It wasn't really nearly some random place, right? So, so really some thought behind it. That's, that's key to uh, your success. And you're using all the tools that we have. You use gaps, you use um, uh, fib retracement and all of that, So which is fantastic. Uh, the one thing I want to encourage you, when you take this first trade uh, and you see this gap up, instead of exiting i would like you to have to start building some confidence because you have this uh supply zone i mean demand zone right in a very mm -hmm. very strong market to the upside which we have already captured the 78.6 right so you have to assume until this is broken we're in an upside right that's mm -hmm. that's where that confidence is going to start to build in so Instead of exiting everything, keep some. Maybe 25%. Maybe you don't keep 20, uh, 50%, but maybe 25%. Maybe 20%. Right? You mm -hmm. keep that, and you let those give you that 2x move. Right? You let those give you that 2x move, but those were not 2x. Those are, right now, they're sitting at almost forex and here's the thing when you take this trade and you took partial position and you let the rest ride you're gonna just keep moving your stop right until you have a predetermined exit your predetermined exit should be the uh negative 272 extension that's that's a good area mm -hmm. the next supply zone that's a good area right so between those two right here so even if we use the negative 272 as your exit, that 3.7x. That's what I mm -hmm. want to encourage you to do. In addition, add the second trade. Keep this open. Add the second trade. Because the second trade says, hey, I'm giving you an opportunity to enter. Right? You, now, when you add the second trade, this stop here has moved up here. It's Okay, I, this, this tool doesn't allow me to put a stop above my entry, but this mm -hmm. stop has started to move up to where it's not going to lose any money, this position. So when mm -hmm. you enter this position, because this cannot lose anymore, you can still enter full position here, right? It's not partial, it's full position, because this position mm -hmm. now doesn't count. Unless you don't have the funds in your account, right? That's the only thing that should prevent you, but if... For you, yeah. full position means 10 shares. Then this trade is 10 shares. Because this mm -hmm. trade, one, you've taken a significant portion out of it, right? You've removed seven, eight shares out of the 10. Two, your stop loss is above your entry. Mm -hmm. and, and you keep writing it up. So when you enter this, again, another 10 position trade. Mm -hmm. And now with this 10 position trade, that... It has not given you any sign of downside move. Yes, it, it keeps gapping up and you're scared of this gap. I understand. But so let me take this one back to here because this is where we exited. And then on this one, again, you keep letting it ride. Uh, when you reach your 2x, you exit your... 50% position, right? From there, the negative 272 
extension again comes into the picture for you. Then you can say, okay, I'll take the next position off at negative 272, 25%, another 25%, right? And again, if you're afraid, you take 75%, at least at your 2x. Give it the 2x because mm -hmm. it has not given you any reason. It has given you more reason to the upside than it has to the downside. Right? So scared money doesn't make money. Right? So you, there's some risk yeah. has to stay in the game. And, mm -hmm. you know, again, your stop loss, beautifully made, right? Your initial stop loss. So uh, just to get this writing out of the way. So you have your entry, you have your stop loss, and you gap up. You don't gap up to 2x, so you're not exiting, but at least now you can feel free to move your stop loss. Now, there's enough breathing room here. You can keep moving your stop loss up. Hmm. And and then it just keeps going up, right? It just keeps going up. Like you shouldn't no. be afraid of. Uh, you shouldn't be afraid of gaps. You shouldn't be afraid of minor uh, consolidation or pullback. That's why you have wiggle room. And the only way you'll build the confidence is to keep doing it, even when you're doing it paper trading, just keep doing it, like trust your uh, position, let it do its thing. It's okay to lose mm -hmm. because those losses will teach you, why did I lose? Oh, I was greedy. Why did I lose? I just worked out that way, right? When if, if you say it just worked out that way, there's no additional thing to be done, you just move on. But if you say I was greedy or I was fearful, then you work on adjusting those uh, emotions. Because you had like beautiful positions, like you, beautiful trades, right? I give you that beautiful trades and mm -hmm. uh, stop loss, very nice. I love the, uh, how you set up the stop loss. Just don't be afraid to let it ride when it's in a very strong market. The mm -hmm. last time we saw this market down was in March. After that, it's just tearing it up, right? Minor pullbacks. Yeah. Even those minor pullbacks are green to green areas, right? You, yeah. you, even, I should say, green to yellow is what we've been seeing. And we're not seeing any 61.8 retracement. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of 23.6 and some 31.8. Right? They're staying up in this zone. Very shallow, very shallow. A little bit deeper, but very shallow pullbacks. Mm -hmm. That's the reason to just say, I'm going to believe in my trade. I'm going to let it happen. Right? I want you to build no. that confidence because I, you have it right. You have the system down. Your thinking is right. Yeah. Just use those tools and trust them and just go for it. Benny, how would you think about um, I guess when I was taking these trades, I also tried to be mindful around, although it's not my focus, how would time decay potentially impact my decision making, you know? And so that was also something I, I tried to at least kind of be mindful of, even though I know this is paper trading and we don't have all the functionality and stuff, um, especially with SPY and QQQ, you know, the way I try to make it is, you know, I try to scan like the prices of options and said okay you know probably based off my account size you know I, I can probably do anywhere between one week and two week expiration um options as i look at it and so i try to keep that in mind because anything you know beyond two weeks is like uh you know quite expensive uh, contract prices so you'd be able to afford very little shares so how would you should i take that into consideration here as well as we do some practice so let's let's talk about uh, account size and uh, expiration. They are not uh, dependent on each other. Right? Make make sure that is uh, something that you really consider. Right? Do not think. 
that because of your account size you're only limited to weeklies to one week out that's one uh the uh second part to that is uh if if your account size says i can do three contracts maximum two weeks out just do one contract and go f four weeks out right and again that's uh one possibility that you have so put uh that perspective in mind as you're looking at at options uh then the the next uh trick that comes with this is knowing uh which is the right expiration date for the position and analysis that you're making i think that that would be key if you uh, if you kind of study like if i pull back let's look at this one right if i pull back green to green it takes me one week to get to negative 272 right maybe if you if you do that multiple times remember we have mm -hmm. this tool yeah the extension. extension tool yeah right you say we have this extension tool actually uh, let me just do it. so if you're saying from here to here from here i'm going to take it up here and mm -hmm. then you say how long did this take this whole from end to end so so you can see it from Wednesday, May 24th until Wednesday, May 31st. Right? This is the area. Again, here, you see it here. 24th to 31st. This is the area, right? So that's one week. So when you enter a trade here, now here's the key part. Because you're not entering right at the low, because you're waiting for something to happen and you're entering here you're one week you, you count it from this low and then you say okay mm -hmm. my one week out from the 31st is to the seventh right the next week mm -hmm. the seventh right and so because then you have to go to that friday which is the ninth mm -hmm. which is the ninth because the 31st was a wednesday i think that's a wednesday here Yep, it's a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So you go to that the following week, Friday. That's when you say, okay, I have this much time to make this move. This, I'm just simplifying mm -hmm. this one move, right? Because you have to do a lot of these extensions to see if, if that, um, is that a trend? Is that a norm? And then based on that, you can say, okay, great. Now I can uh, say one week out option is good enough. Uh, but mm -hmm. if your analysis says, hey, it might take me four weeks, then you prepare for four weeks. Or you'll say, uh, I still do two weeks, but once I have one X move, I'm out. I don't wait for two X move, right? Something of that nature. Or because you're doing options, you say, once I have 20% return, 30% return, I'm out. You can start to think in those ways and modify your exit. Right, you can do a lot of 30% exits multiple times and if you can modify it that way. Or you can say, hey, I'm going to wait and, and this is going to give me 150% return. Right? Uh, so, or you can say, what is my 2x move? From this entry to somewhere, to this stop, 2x move is somewhere here. This is 2x move. Did I hit it? Yes. I, if I wait to this day, I hit it. Whatever price that option gives me when I hit that price, I'm out, right? You set an alert at this price. When you get that alert, you're out, right? There's no second guessing or anything. You're out because you've made your analysis. So that's how, how I want you to start to think about uh, options. Yeah, it's very helpful. Thanks, Benny. So let's do a little bit of uh, preparation for the week ahead.
uh, I know we uh, wrapped it up uh, too soon so let's just add this part to uh, this week's lesson and so I, I went back to the daily chart on both the spies and the queues look at the daily chart and what's a uh, headwind that's uh, coming that we want to be mindful of that those are some of the things I want to start preparing for uh, and so as we look at those uh, where are our pullbacks we never closed below 38.2 so from here as you can see right never went below 38.2 so now when you look at those charts, what you want to see is what's the headwind. Supply zone coming up, negative 272 coming up, right? So before I expect any pullback, before I expect any pullback, I want to see these headwinds right now we're right up against it for spies for queues we've gone past some of them but we're right up against some yeah now what's interesting is this next supply zone is at the negative 272 so here is where i'll be a little bit more cautious when when i get here and if i get a pullback i want to see how deep is that pullback so i can enter Preferably, right, those pullbacks give me this green to green zone. That's what I would like to see. So uh, right now, futures, Asia market futures don't really mean much, even as you can see on the daily, it's an inside bar. So they don't really tell us anything. It's really after midnight uh, Pacific time when, uh, you know, London is open, when Frankfurt is open. Those are uh, some of the big movements that could give us some indication. Even with that, w once the market opened in, uh, in uh, New York, it's a different story, right? You have going down and then New York says, hey, I'm going to do something about this. I don't like this moving to the downside. I'm going to take it up. So uh, the U.S. does its own thing because we're focused on the U.S. market, right? So most of our products. So, uh, as we are preparing for, we're up against supply zone in, uh, in the spies, we're up against supply zone. Uh, what I would like to see is test the supply zone to the upside. That's one thing I'd like to see. Uh, I like to see a close to the gap to the upside these are a couple of things I want to see I don't want to prepare for a downside because that would be a reversal right we always talk about we don't enter reversals so uh, you know there's nothing in here that told us 78.6 is breached from this side to say we're going to go to the downside or even you know worst case scenario if you want to enter something like that what you want to see is from this high we start to make lower high lower low right so but i don't want to talk about those because this is what we see in the market so we trade what we see uh it's very similar to the queues the only difference with the queues we have quite some distance we have quite some distance before uh, we can get to this area. So I would like to see it tested this way. That's one possibility. Or uh, it just test the low side and then does this. That's another possibility. So again, playing to the upside. I don't want to think about the downside at this moment until somebody says, hey, this is a very strong supply zone. 
I'm going to use this to take the market back down, right? Lower highs, lower lows. Until we see that, uh, we prepare to the upside. You are, you should be today. We shouldn't be talking about entry for you. We should be talking about exit, right? So again, I don't bring it up to beat you up with it. I bring it up to encourage you to be okay to stay in the trade. Right? Just be okay to stay in the trade because when this happens, this is when you say, okay, I'll exit my trade. And then mm. when this happens, you can say, okay, I'm, I'm going to re-enter or I'm going to add to my position. <laughs> so that's, okay. yeah. Sounds good? Sounds good, Ben. Thanks. Right. Very helpful. Yeah. Very good. Take care for now.